just in a bad space. Phone wasn't ringing for shows. I'm like, damn. Capone called me. Yo, what's your address? You know, your name came up on our platform a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm happy to hear there's a, some, a positive ending to it, I guess. Man, fuck that dude, man. <laughs> but uh, we, we had comedian Capone on our platform um, out in New York. We were talking to Capone and we were just talking about how hard it was for his struggle coming up as a comedian. And I guess at one point you were kind of like the guy in New York, you know, and still are. But at one point it was like, yo, if you want to get popping, you know, Gerald Kelly's kind of the, the guy. And Capone said he would try to reach out to you or get some type of feedback. And yeah. you kind of ultimately laughed in his face. And he says he, then he wanted to fight you. Coming up in this business, nobody reached out. I was a drug dealer, came from prison. I reached out to several comedians. Hey, I'm a new comedian, just one shot. They turned it back on me. And even got to a point where one comedian I was about to knock out simply because my mentality was still prison. Or do you want to mention that for the story context? Say that again? Who, who you, can you mention who you're talking about? All right, Gerald Kelly. Okay. Gerald Kelly, which we became very good friends back then. I'll never forget the first time I approached him and I approached talent. And I said, hey guys, I'm a new comedian and I, um, I want to get in. And uh, you know, can y'all show me the ropes? Talent was honest with me. He had Rudy Rush under his wing and he said, I don't really deal with new comedians. Rob Stapleton, who was like the guy in New York, he was like, I, I don't really deal with new comedians. And I really looked up to Gerald because Gerald had a different type of comedy that I really liked. And when I approached him, it was something totally different. It was like, ha, like making fun of me. This cat been doing comedy for one day and he already want to know the ropes and this and that. And I didn't know how to take that. Now, hearing that, um, I'm sure you have a response to that. And yeah. where are you and Capone um, in terms of now? So um, when I saw that interview a couple months ago, I didn't see it at first. My phone started ringing when the shit aired. My phone went off, social media, DMs, everything. And the first thing I thought about was, <clears throat> I don't even f with these guys no more. I don't talk to these guys, the New York Kings, I don't f with them, yada, 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 yada. Why are you talking about me, man? And then Jada Kiss got a song called Me. I don't know if you're Irish, I like the reference to my, my hip hop icons, mm -hmm. man. Nipsey, Jay, Jada Kiss, me. Why are you talking about me? Why are you then I thought about it, man. Like, you know, let me, let me, let me watch this video. Let me watch this interview. Mm. And I was mad. I did everything in my household to get mad. I'm like, fuck that. I'm gonna reach out to, to Comedy Hype. I'm gonna go back at this dude. Yada, 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 yada. But nobody in my circle got mad. Mm. My wife was like, what you mad about? All he did was say how he felt. My son Isaiah was like, oh, I'm going back to sleep, bro. All the nigga did was say how he felt, bro. Now I'm mad at them. F y'all. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I don't remember, and I was that kind of guy. I would, laugh, I would laugh in your face, man. And I don't remember doing it, but he said it that I did it. Like, I was like, yo, man, come on, man. This dude new in the game, man. He wanted to know the whole game right away. Come on, man. I probably did it sarcastically, but he said he offend, it offended him. Yeah. And I think his quote was, I was about to knock him out. Now, if his quote was, I wanted to knock him out, I'd have took that. But his quote was, I was about to knock him out. There's a difference. Okay. And you're talking about 27 years ago. Ooh. I was nice with these motherfuckers. Is ask anybody from, from, from New York that know me. Uh, you wasn't knocking Gerald Kelly out, not, not 20 something years ago. Today, I just saw Capone the other day. He in shape. I'm a shape. He could probably get me today, bro. I'm calling him. I'm snitching. I'm calling the cops on him today. <laughs> but um, I understood where he was. What, I understood after, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh. We, we, um... How would you guys two connect? 
after the interview. We, 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 I wasn't reaching out. I know damn well he wasn't going to reach out. But when we lost Kobe Bryant, mm. I was sitting in a hotel in uh, Greensville, South Carolina, about to go perform. And I picked up my phone and I was like, I got a call. Capone. Because out of all those guys, Rob Stapleton, the talent, you know, um, you know, Rob Stapleton, the talent, part of that New York King era in New York, Capone is the only one really who I would let sit at my table with my family. My mom knows him. He was the only one. We're similar. We're both pit bulls. Mm -hmm. You know, we both would curse the motherfucker out. We both were alike. We're like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a real dude. I'm a real dude. I'm a real dude. Teflon cats love me. Teflon cats love me. I'm talking about real Teflon dudes fuck with Gerald Kelly. Love me. That says a lot about who you are as a human being. So Capone is one of those, one of those cats. Mm -hmm. So that's why we either this or we this. But the respect has to be there. So I'm sitting there going, yo, this Kobe Bryant shit. And I'm watching all of Kobe's friends, mm. the D Wades, the Shaquille O'Neal's, you know what I'm saying, cry on TV. And it might have been, you know, some friction with some of them in Kobe that they didn't clean the air. You feel me? So I was like, I gotta clean the air, man. I'm gonna I'm I'm reach out. I called him. He picked up. Yo, I said, Cap, what's going on, man? So, yo, it's funny you called me, man. You know, somebody just told me some shit you were saying about me about another show. Da, da, da. I said, bro, listen, man. I ain't got nothing to say bad about you, man. I just wanted to call you, man. This Kobe Bryant shit got me feeling a certain way, bro. Life is short. Life is short. Who the f knew we lose Kobe Bryant in a helicopter crash? I said, the last thing I want to do is be alive and something happened to you. And I never had a chance to tell you, hey, man. Love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, that's, that's, I feel that way, bro. I feel, I feel the same way you feel, but it shouldn't take a tragedy like that to. So we talked for about an hour. The next day at my hotel, he called me. We talked for about two hours about life. Then Capone did... Some, some shit that really changed what, I was, what I've been going through. Had some knee surgery in August. A lot of people don't know this. This is the first time me telling it publicly. Okay. And the doctor fucked my knee up. He took the cartilage out. He cut too much. So now I got bone on bone in my left knee. I had a couple blood clots. I couldn't fly because of the clots. Heavy D died like that. So, I was in bad shape, man. Then, all of a sudden, my left eye was like puffed up. I had an irritation of something going on. Just in a bad space. Phone wasn't ringing for shows. Mm. I'm like, damn. Capone called me. Yo, what's your address? He got a home out here, too. Came my address. I left the door open. He pulled up, called me at the door. When he got there, about, a, about an hour away. Everything in Atlanta is an hour away from each other anyway. Came in, man. We hugged, embraced. And it felt like I got my brother back. Mm. Real brother. You know what I'm saying? And he sat down on one of my couches. And he was like, yo... Let's get right to it, man. What's going on with you, man? He saw me limping. He saw the eye. So, I could have been on this. Oh, man, shit is good, man. You know, on tour, on the road. You know, got the deal with John Legend. You know, got all this shit going on. You know, I could have been on that. But immediately, God said, keep it real, bro. Hey, man, my knee's fucked. 
fucked up, going through this, a lot of pains. I noticed it. Then he said, I know he noticed I'm gaining some more weight. You know, what's up with your eye, Gerald? I told him about the eye. Man, he got up, he started walking around my living room. And he, he, he gave me this Les Brown video. Audio, no video. Deep shit. I watched it, man. I'm emotional. Got it. He opens up my door to my backyard. Any spirits in the house, out of there. Capone always been a deep dude. So, he puts on another literature for me to read and, and listen to an audio. It's touching right to the soul. Then he tells me some things he got going on, some connects that are perfect for what I got going on. Then we talk about why he said what he said on Comedy Hype and how he felt and, you know, moving forward. And, <clears throat> and then he said, let's go drive and pick Hunter up. My six-year-old. He never met Hunter. But anybody who meets Hunter, Hunter's going to change your life. We pick Hunter up, and he says, Hunter, you want to go get something to eat? Hunter goes, no, sir. Not really hungry. Had snacks. He goes, no, sir. When, you're teaching, when your children are respectful, it's a reflection of the parenting. So Hunter goes, Pat, let's go. Let's go get something to eat. Let's go, to, let's go get something to eat. So we go get something to eat. In the car, Hunt, Hunt Capone goes, man, I'm impressed with this kid, man. I seen his stand-up, but damn. He goes, Hunter, can you act? He goes, yes, sir. Capone goes, I want you, I want to play your mother. You're trying to stay home from school. You're sick, but your mother's not going for it. He goes, yes, sir, let's go. Action. Hunter goes, <coughs> Capone goes, Hunter, what's wrong with you? I'm sick. <coughs> I can't go to school. <coughs> he goes, are you pulling my leg? He goes, no, I'm seriously, I'm honestly sick. I don't want to go to school. Capone's like, and he's like, <coughs> I'm sick. I've been sick all week. Capone is like, yo, cut. We get out the rest, we get out to go in the restaurant. Hunter looks at Capone and goes, hey. When we go in this restaurant, our people gonna be like, that's Capone, that's Capone. He ate lunch, came back to the crib, and Capone had to get to beat that traffic. So he said, we're gonna talk later. But as he's driving off, Hunter's at the door, watching him leave like he really don't want him to leave. It's my son, man. Fuck this business, people's feelings. It's my child. Got like that with Capone. Capone called me and said, yo, man, I want to bring Hunter to my house for the weekend, next weekend. I want to work with him on some material. He says, Hunter's funny as hell. What you wrote him is funny as hell, but I want to give him some kid-friendly stuff. Keep him a kid. You know, I write, I write great shit for my kids. But some of that content has grown. When it came time for Hunter to spend the weekend at home, Hunter was excited. My wife was cool with it. Um, now you gotta remember, I got another son that's, a, that's, that's young at the crib, the 13 year old. Mm -hmm. He's like, what's up with me? Why I can't go? I'm like, yo, hold on, let, let, let Hunter go. So Capone was like, bring them both. So we drive, me and my wife drive the kids there. He prepared meals for us, man. Healthy stuff. You know, um, introduced us to his family, brought us in his house with his family, you know? And shared things with, with me that I wouldn't share with nobody else, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we wind up staying. Mm. We, didn't, we didn't go back and leave the kids. We we watched the Wilder fight, or whatever the, the, the mm -hmm. if you call that a fight, and 
we just bonded again, me and him. Next day, breakfast. The wife was bonded upstairs with his, with his young lady. You know, um, and it was, for the, it was for the culture. He was like, yo, bro, we gonna put something together in New York. You know, everybody knows us from New York. Yeah. But everybody for the last five, six years knows us from this. So now when they see this, it's gonna help change the lives of some of the young comics or the youth or whatever. Cause everybody don't want you to be, I was at the Jay-Z concert when he brought Nas on stage. I was sitting right there in Jersey, mm. in the front right there. The I Declare War concert. And everybody was in there waiting for Jay to come at everybody. But then we look up and he got Diddy and the Locks back together. He got, I think, Ludacris. And I forgot somebody from the South that wasn't really Jeezy and somebody from down here that wasn't fucking with each other. Got them back together. Then he brought down Nas. And I'll sit next to a dude when everybody else was like, yeah, it's, yes, this is beautiful. This dude was like, fuck that, man. Then I went outside on the phone and the cats was on their phone going, man, it's bullshit, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody don't want to see everybody together. So that was a beautiful moment, man, for, um, for the comedy culture, man, for, for, my, for me. It opens up other doors, man. You know what I'm saying? It opens up a show that we can do together, some other stuff we can do together. You know, and it just took one person, two people being bigger than the situation.